The Republican National Convention has begun. The delegates are most likely going to easily nominate Trump as their presidential candidate. And we have also found out, after many months of waiting and speculating, on who Trump has anointed as his VP. And this one was actually a surprise to me because I wasn't expecting J.D. Vance to be his top choice, but here we are. Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, who's actually younger than me, he's 39 years old, is going to be literally a heartbeat away from being president. Should something happen to Trump, if Trump wins the election, becomes the 47th president, and within a four-year period of his second and final term, it is possible that J.D. Vance could, one way or the other, become the 48th president of the United States. Now, he hasn't been serving in the Senate very long. Once again, from the state of Ohio, Trump officially endorsed him on Truth Social. So, yeah, I guess Trump thinks very highly of J.D. Vance. So I looked into J.D. Vance a little bit because, to be honest, I didn't really know too much about the guy. So he was a Marine. So anyone that's served our country, you know, thank you for your service. I appreciate that. And I'm sure most Americans do. From there, uh, he uh, graduated from Ohio State. He went on to uh, Yale Law School. So he has quite some uh, credentials there when it comes to education. Uh, he was an author of a famous book. Uh, it was the Hillbilly Eulogy, which became a, a movie that was very popular or was well liked. I don't know if it was a blockbuster, but uh, he is, I guess, considered to be a best selling author. What is interesting about J.D. Vance is there was a time he was uh, never Trumper. We wind back to the year 2016 when I was a never Trumper. I was also a never Hillary. I didn't like either one of them. I even had a meme I made called Choose the Form of Your Destructor, which I used in a few videos back then because I didn't really feel like uh, it was a good choice either way between Hillary Clinton or Trump back in 2016. Full disclosure, I did vote for Trump against Biden in 2020. So, yeah, back in 2016, J.D. Vance was a never-Trumper. He said some pretty negative things about Trump. And I don't know if he actually ended up voting for Hillary. I think he, he said he was going to or thinking about voting for Hillary over Trump. I don't know if he ever confirmed that he went through with that on Election Day 2016. But one of the more infamous things that J.D. Vance said about Trump back in 2016 was he called him America's Hitler. And so I, being a smart ass that I am on Twitter, asked J.D. Vance, does that make him America's Rudolph Hess? Hopefully I don't get black bagged in the middle of the night during the uh, Trump Vance administration over that one. I still hope they believe in freedom of speech. But uh, anyways, I just want to make the point that he said that about Trump back in 2016 when he was still a never Trumper. Over a two year period from 2016 to 2018, he actually pulled a 180. He ended up ultimately apologizing to Trump over some of the things that he said about Trump and since then has become a uh, hardcore Trump supporter and part of MAGA. And Trump has also acknowledged that uh, Vance once upon a time said some negative things about Trump. And to be fair, Trump has said some pretty nasty things about other people as well that have been his uh, rivals in the 2016 election and the 2020 election and of course in the 2024 election, especially with the Republican presidential primary. He had a lot of negative things to say about uh, DeSantis, as well as Nikki Haley, and uh, the rest of them as well. But a couple of them ended up endorsing him, such as Vivek Ramaswamy, Doug Burgum, even uh, DeSantis ultimately uh, had, I guess, a moment with Trump where they buried the hatchet. Perhaps J.D. Vance and Trump are kind of cut from a similar cloth when it comes to trash-talking people they don't like and eventually pulling a 180 and... Uh, singing the high praises of someone they once did not speak so highly of. But that's the past. This is the present. Where is J.D. Vance now? Well, 
He is still a relatively new senator. He's only served as senator of Ohio for the U.S. Senate for about a year now. And uh, he hasn't really done much in the Senate from what I've noticed. But uh, he's obviously been a very big uh, MAGA supporter for Trump throughout the 2024 presidential campaign, along with Vivek, Tim Scott, Bergam, a few others as well. Now, one thing I was talking about throughout the uh, Republican presidential primary was that a lot of the uh, candidates were actually lighting themselves in an effort to become the quote-unquote heir to MAGA. And most of them, I guess, were not worthy of being the heir or they still might be heirs in their own right, like Tim Scott, Vivek, Doug Burgum. But I think that by making J.D. Vance his vice presidential candidate, you have Donald Trump officially passing the, uh, I guess, the position of heir to MAGA to J.D. Vance because he would be hypothetically vice president to Trump if Trump does win the 2024 election. And he does now share a lot of very similar platforms that Trump has, including a big chunk of what MAGA now stands for, including uh, being against uh, funding uh, the Ukraine war against Russia. He's also very anti-divorce when it comes to abusive marriages, which I, I do find concerning. And by the way, J.D. Vance is married and uh, has three children with his wife, who was Democrat, but I don't know if she's still Democrat now. Uh, she's of Indian descent. But I would like to believe that he has a very healthy, happy, loving relationship with his wife. But unfortunately, J.D. Vance, despite your best intentions about wanting marriages to stay together, there are a lot of very abusive marriages out there and a lot of very abusive husbands and wives. And I, I don't think that that's healthy in a marriage with or without children in it, especially with children in it. It's very unhealthy. So that's something I'm completely against. I, I support people's rights to divorce. He's also very anti-abortion. And, uh, you know, there's some other things that we could go in about when it comes to J.D. Vance's opinion on this and that. I guess in simplest terms, he is probably one of the best choices in Trump's eye as a vice presidential candidate, as a quote unquote heir to MAGA, because their platforms are almost identical. Now, no two uh, candidates are going to agree on everything, but J.D. Vance has come a long ways from his stance in 2016 when he was a never Trumper Republican to now being a MAGA Republican who's, I guess, second in line to uh, MAGA under Trump. Should something happen to Trump, you know, either before the election or after the election, if he does get elected 47th president. But yeah, we now know who is Trump's official vice presidential running mate in Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. It is fascinating because I thought that Trump would go for a more unifying option because that's usually the strategy of a lot of uh, presidential candidates because they already have their base secure. Trump already has uh, the MAGA wing of the Republican Party under control, right? Locked down. But there's still elements of the Republican Party that are not really fans of Trump still. Some are on the fence and they may vote for him because they'd rather vote for Trump than uh, Biden or they just feel like they have no choice but to toe the party line because of parties. People put parties over people and parties over principle all the time, whether you're Republican, Democrat, etc. I don't know why I thought that he'd pick somebody else that would like bring in a different like wing of the Republican Party or conservatives or even, dare I say, moderates, you know, maybe somebody that was more moderate than him to try to reach across the aisle or uh, court independent voters, because there are a lot of independent voters out there, myself included. But in this situation, it's become abundantly clear over the past several months that Trump has taken control of the Republican Party. His daughter-in-law is a co-chair of the Republican Party now. There was a purge several months ago, and he has all but full authoritarian control of the RNC, the GOP, whatever you wish to call it. Unlike Biden, who has far less control of the Democrat Party these days. So Trump, I guess, feels like either 
people are going to get on board with him in Vance for Election Day 2024 or they're not. And it's I guess it's ride or die. So I find that very, very fascinating that Trump isn't even trying to reach across uh, the tent of the Republican Party. But it's also quite possible that anyone else that identified as Republican that didn't necessarily consider themselves to be a quote-unquote Trump MAGA Republican may no longer be welcome in Trump's Republican Party. Whether or not this strategy by Trump works out for him in advance on Election Day remains to be seen, but obviously he's gotten a lot of sympathy and potential additional voters from what happened over the weekend in Pennsylvania with his assassination attempt where tragically one person was killed, a 50-year-old uh, husband, father, firefighter who lost his life, and a few other individuals that were injured. Hopefully they're recovering. But the choice of J.D. Vance makes it pretty clear that Trump does not care about reaching across any aisles, whether it's towards other conservatives that are still not really on the fence with Trump or MAGA or with uh, moderate Republicans or independents or moderates in general or even moderate Democrats. Of course, I imagine that moderate Democrats are more inclined to vote for Biden and Harris over Trump anyways. At least with Mike Pence back in 2016, Mike Pence was a Republican that represented a certain faction of the Republican Party that Trump was trying to win over. Now it seems abundantly clear that Trump doesn't care about that particular faction at all. In fact, he probably sees them as a bunch of traitors because Pence refused to bend the knee to Trump on January 6th. Personally, I would have probably gone with Tulsi Gabbard. I know I, I once was a Tulsi Gabbard cheerleader in 2020. She kicked Kamala Harris's ass in their little debate. I think that she would have been a much better vice presidential candidate for Biden back in the day. And if that was the case, I probably would be supporting a Biden-Tulsi ticket. And with Tulsi on Trump's ticket, I probably would have supported her. And yeah, she's come out congratulating J.D. Vance because she's gone from being a moderate Democrat to, I guess trying to move herself into uh, the Trump camp, even though she did have some negative things to say about Trump when she was a congresswoman from Hawaii, and that's to be expected. But I think that she would have been a better choice than J.D. Vance because she was a Democrat. I, I identify her more as like a, a moderate or a, like a moderate conservative now or moderate Republican uh, she has some liberal leanings. She has some conservative leanings. She's also uh, served our country. And she checks a few other boxes as well. That would have made her, in my opinion, a bit more appealing as a VP choice than J.D. Vance, which is basically just a, a younger, bearded version of Donald Trump. But there's still a possibility that Tulsi and some of the other potential pres vice presidential candidates will still find their way into Trump's cabinet because they have been loyal to him. Tulsi, I guess, more or less has been loyal. Tim Scott, along with Burgum, Vivek Ramaswamy. So I wouldn't be shocked at all if Trump does end up winning the 2024 election. He ends up finding places for all of them within his cabinet. You know, certain positions, victory goes the spoils, that's the way it usually is when it comes to these uh, presidential elections. But anyways, J.D. Vance is officially Trump's VP choice. I guess once Trump is officially nominated, they'll also nominate J.D. Vance or vice versa. I know J.D. Vance is planning on speaking before the Republican National Convention on Wednesday, and then Trump will get his speech on Thursday. And I'm sure there's going to be increased volume of security detail, Secret Service, other federal agencies, police at the RNC, especially for J.D. Vance's speech, as well as Trump's speeches later this week, in light of the tragedy that occurred over the weekend in Pennsylvania. Now I want to know your honest opinion regarding Trump's VP. Do you think that J.D. Vance is the best choice for his vice president? Do you think he's the worst choice? somewhere in the middle. And if you would have preferred somebody else as Trump's VP, who should have it been in your opinion?
Feel free and let me know below in the comments section.